Okay, good morning everyone. This is going to be the first video and we're going to look at the quiz that we took on this weekend. It says uh, 5758, but it's also on 53. So number one, it is a product rule and I am not prepared, but let me find. You should recognize that as a product. First, derivative of the second, plus second, derivative of the first, and I just cleaned it up a little bit. I factored out e to the x, and I left it like that. We could actually combine those fractions, and some people did, but I wouldn't do it. I would leave it like that. Number two. So number two does have a lot of algebra, and we're going to go through it. It is a natural log of that mess which is 1 over that mess times the derivative of that mess, and that's the chain rule right there. For the arctangent, the derivative of the arctangent is 1 over 1 plus that needs to be squared, and I take the derivative of that, which is 1 half. From there, we do some algebra. I can multiply those, give me a 4x. I can square this bottom piece, and I left it like that. Now this is more algebra. I can combine those fractions uh, to that. Remember, same denominator, put a one under that, get the same denominator. I can multiply by the reciprocal, and that four goes up there to the one. And then I just combine my fractions. Yes, those are the same denominator. I left it like that. That's number two. Number three is asking for the equation of the tangent line, and let me start with that derivative of the arc sine, 1 over the square root of 1 minus that u needs to be squared, times the derivative of that, chain rule again. And so the slope is equal to the derivative evaluated at the x-coordinate. Now that's just a notation because I did use the y dx, and when I substitute in the x value, that is a whole lot of algebra. Let me leave there for a second. You can pause the video if you need to and look at the algebra. That is the slope, which means my equation will look like that. And I know I've said it a whole bunch of times. Do not distribute. Do not move stuff over. Leave the equation as is. Okay, number four. Number four is the second fundamental theorem of calculus. There is no way around it. You need to know that second derivative or second fundamental theorem. Get that top function and plug it there. And then take the derivative of that with the chain rule. And that's the chain rule right there, 1 over 2 red x. Number five, the slope of the normal line. And make sure you give me the normal line. So again, the derivative. With the chain rule, gives me that. If that's the derivative, the I can find the slope of the tangent line by plugging in the x value, and the x value was square root of three over nine. And so I substituted. I can square that number the denominator, and it was nice because the eighty-one went away. And so that is the slope of the tangent line. And the slope of the normal line is over right here, negative reciprocal. Number six, asking for the derivative of the inverse. Now, because g is the inverse, when I'm looking for the derivative of the inverse of f, it's the same as asking you for the derivative of g. The notation, the setup, 1 over the derivative of the original evaluated at the inverse at 15. Well, the inverse at 15, I need to figure what that is. So to figure out what the derivative, what the inverse at 15 is, I think about when the function is 15. And from all the information given, I should see that f of 3 is 15. So g of 15 is 3. And that's what I plugged in to that. Number seven, 
Number seven is the definition of a derivative. No way around it. You look at that. You should know what function I'm asking you to deal with, and you should know the derivative of that function. So the function itself is sine of x, and I'm asking you for the derivative of that, and then plug in a pi over 4. So the derivative of that is cosine, plug in a pi over 4, you get rad 2 over 2. Number 8, another derivative of the inverse, and look at the setup. Again, 1 over the derivative of the original, evaluated at the inverse at 2. And to evaluate the inverse at 2, I figure out when the function is 2. And the function is 2 at 1. So that 1 is what I plug into my derivative. 1 over 13. Right, number 9. Find the equation that has the given derivative at a given point. So step by step. To get the equation, I integrate my derivative. I look at that, I need to recognize that that's arctangent with the a value that is being squared, 3. And so the integral, antiderivative of that, is 1 over the a, arctan of u over the a, plus my constant c. I'm given the point 0, 2. So the y value, the x value, and we know that the arctan of 0 is 0, which all that cleans up, the c value is 2. Let me show you the final answer right there. The y equal 1 third arctan x over 3 plus my constant that I figured out. Number 9. That was number 9. Number 10. I look at that, and we should recognize that as an arc sine. The a value is 5. And so arc 10, or it should be 2, I just took that 2 out, 2 arc 10 of u over the a plus my constant. And I plugged in the point that was given as 5 comma pi and a little bit of algebra. When you substitute in a 5 into there, it's 5 over 5. From pre-calc, arc 10 1 is pi over 2. And my constant came out to be a zero. Again, you can pause the video wherever you need to. Last page, number 11. A definite integral. So looking at that, another arc sign with the a value being 2. So 1 over that. And I rewrote it so that you can see the a value that is being squared arc 10 of u over a from 0 to 1. It is the fundamental theorem, top minus bottom, arc sine of a half minus arc sine of 0. Okay. Number 12. Number 12 is where we caught some people, and let me go through it there. Looking at the original integral, the a value that's being squared is 1, and the u is cosine. Because that u is another function, I do need a u substitution, and I, there it is, the du is a negative sine of x. And so when I change to u, there it is, that negative is what I have there. Now, I did change my limits, and I know we've talked about it a lot. At pi over 2, the u is 0. At pi, over, at pi, the u is negative 1. So because the limits are in the wrong order, I rewrote them from negative 1 to 0, and I made that into a positive. It was negative, I made it into a positive. And then I plug in, top minus the bottom. And the answer was pi over 4. Okay. Next one, 13. If the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, you must divide that out. You either use long division or synthetic division, doesn't matter. Because I have x minus 2, I could use synthetic division. And so I rewrite that into this. 2x plus 11 plus 19 over x minus 2. 
And then I just integrate each piece. And x squared, that is 11x. This is a natural log. I have that stuff underneath as a fraction. Technically, I should use a quick u substitution, let u equal to that, but it will be a natural log. All right, so that is the quiz. I will provide um, grading on this, and actually I'm gonna ask you to grade it, and I'll tell you how to grade each problem. And uh, yeah, this will be our first video.